Antisemitism in the Arab World Antisemitism in the Arab world increased greatly in the 20th century, for several reasons, the breakdown of the Ottoman Empire in traditional Islamic society, European influence, brought about by Western imperialism and Arab Christians, Nazi propaganda, resentment over Jewish nationalism, see Zionism, and the rise of Arab nationalism. Traditionally, Jews in the Muslim world were considered to be people of the book and were given dhimmi status. They were afforded relative security against persecution, provided they did not contest the inferior social and legal status imposed on them. While there were anti-Semitic incidents before the 20th century, anti-Semitism increased dramatically as a result of the Arab-Israeli conflict. After the 1948 Arab-Israeli War, the Palestinian Exodus, the creation of the State of Israel and Israeli victories during the wars of 1956 and 1967 were a severe humiliation to Israel's opponents primarily Egypt, Syria, and Iraq. However, by the mid-1970s the vast majority of Jews had left Arab and Muslim countries, moving primarily to Israel, France and the United States. The reasons for the exodus are varied and disputed. By the 1980s, according to historian Bernard Lewis, the volume of anti-Semitic literature published in the Arab world, and the authority of its sponsors, seemed to suggest that classical anti-Semitism had become an essential part of Arab intellectual life, considerably more than in late 19th and early 20th century France and to a degree that has been compared to Nazi Germany. The rise of political Islam during the 1980s and afterwards provided a new mutation of Islamic anti-Semitism, giving the hatred of Jews a religious component. In their 2008 report on contemporary Arab Muslim antisemitism, the Israeli Intelligence and Terrorism Information Center dates the beginning of this phenomenon to the spread of classic European Christian antisemitism into the Arab world starting in the late 19th century. In 2014, the Anti Defamation League published a global survey of worldwide antisemitic attitudes, reporting that in the Middle East, 74% of adults agreed with the majority of the survey's 11 anti-Semitic propositions, including that Jews have too much power in international financial markets and that Jews are responsible for most of the world's wars. Jews, along with Christians and Zoroastrians, typically had the legal status of dhimmi, protected minority, in the lands conquered by Muslim Arabs, generally applied to non-Muslim minorities. Jews were generally seen as a religious group, not a separate race thus being a part of the Arab family. Dhimmi were subjected to a number of restrictions, the application and severity of which varied with time and place. Restrictions included residency in segregated quarters, obligation to wear distinctive clothing, public subservience to Muslims, prohibitions against proselytizing and against marrying Muslim women, and limited access to the legal system. The testimony of a Jew did not count if contradicted by that of a Muslim. Dhimmi had to pay a special poll tax, the jizya which exempted them from military service, and also from payment of the zakat alms tax required of Muslims. In return, Demi were granted limited rights, including a degree of tolerance, community autonomy in personal matters, and protection from being killed outright. Jewish communities, like Christian ones, were typically constituted as semi-autonomous entities managed by their own laws and leadership, who carried the responsibility for the community towards the Muslim rulers. By medieval standards, Conditions for Jews under Islam were generally more formalized and better than those of Jews in Christian lands, in part due to the sharing of minority status with Christians in these lands. There is evidence for this claim in that the status of Jews in lands with no Christian minority was usually worse than their status in lands with one. For example, there were numerous incidents of massacres and ethnic cleansing of Jews in North Africa, especially in Morocco, Libya and Algeria where eventually Jews were forced to live in ghettos. Decrees ordering the destruction of synagogues were enacted in the Middle Ages in Egypt, Syria, Iraq, and Yemen. At certain times in Yemen, Morocco, and Baghdad, Jews were forced to convert to Islam or face death. The situation where Jews both enjoyed cultural and economic prosperity at times, but were widely persecuted at other times, was summarized by G. E. von Grunbaum. It would not be difficult to put together the names of a very sizable number of Jewish subjects or citizens of the Islamic area who have attained to high rank, to power, to great financial influence, to significant and recognized intellectual attainment, and the same could be done for Christians. But it would again not be difficult to compile a lengthy list of persecutions, arbitrary confiscations, attempted forced conversions, or pogroms. 
some scholars hold that Arab anti-Semitism in the modern world arose in the 19th century, against the backdrop of conflicting Jewish and Arab nationalism, and was imported into the Arab world primarily by nationalistically minded Christian Arabs, and only subsequently was it Islamized, Mark Cohen states. According to Bernard Lewis the Damascus affair was an accusation of ritual murder and a blood libel against Jews in Damascus in 1840. On February 5, 1840, Franciscan Capuchin friar Father Thomas and his Greek servant were reported missing, never to be seen again. The Turkish governor and the French consul Radomantone believed accusations of ritual murder and blood libel, as the alleged murder occurred before the Jewish Passover. An investigation was staged, and Solomon Negrin, a Jewish barber, confessed under torture and accused other Jews. Two other Jews died under torture, and one, Moses Ablafia, converted to Islam to escape torture. More arrests and atrocities followed, culminating in 63 Jewish children being held hostage and mob attacks on Jewish communities throughout the Middle East. International outrage led to Ibrahim Pasha in Egypt ordering an investigation. Negotiations in Alexandria eventually secured the unconditional release and recognition of innocence of the nine prisoners still remaining alive, out of 13. Later in Constantinople, Moses Montefiore, leader of the British Jewish community, persuaded Sultan Abdul Mesidai to issue a firman, edict, intended to halt the spread of blood libel accusations in the Ottoman Empire. And for the love we bear to our subjects, we cannot permit the Jewish nation, whose innocence for the crime alleged against them is evident, to be worried and tormented as a consequence of accusations which have not the least foundation in truth. Nevertheless, pogroms spread through the Middle East and North Africa, Aleppo, 1850, 1875, Damascus, 1840, 1848, 1890, Beirut, 1862, 1874, Deir al-Kamar, 1847, Jaffa, 1876, Jerusalem, 1847, 1870 and 1895, Cairo, 1844, 1890, 190102, Mansura, 1877, Alexandria, 1870, 1882, 190107, Port Said, 1903, 1908, and Mahur, 1871, 1873, 1877, 1891. The Dreyfus Affair of the late 19th century had consequences in the Arab world. Passionate outbursts of anti-Semitism in France were echoed in areas of French influence, especially Maronite Lebanon. The Muslim Arab press, however, was sympathetic to the falsely accused Captain Dreyfus, and criticized the persecution of Jews in France. While anti-Semitism has increased in the wake of the Arab-Israeli conflict, there were pogroms against Jews prior to the foundation of Israel including Nazi-inspired pogroms in Algeria in the 1930s, and attacks on the Jews of Iraq and Libya in the 1940s. In 1941, 180 Jews were murdered and 700 were injured in the anti-Jewish riots known as the Farhud. 400 Jews were injured in violent demonstrations in Egypt in 1945 and Jewish property was vandalized and looted. In Libya, 130 Jews were killed and 266 injured. In December 1947, 13 Jews were killed in Damascus, including 8 children, and 26 were injured. In Aleppo, rioting resulted in dozens of Jewish casualties, damage to 150 Jewish homes, and the torching of 5 schools and 10 synagogues. In Yemen, 97 Jews were murdered and 120 injured. Anti-Semitism in the Arab world increased in the 20th century, as anti-Semitic propaganda and blood libels were imported from Europe and as resentment against Zionist efforts and British Mandate of Palestine spread. British troops stationed in Palestine arrived fresh from deployment in the Russian Civil War, fighting alongside the White Movement. The British forces are credited with introducing the anti-Semitic hoax called the Protocols of the Elders of Zion to Palestine. In March 1921, Musa Qasem el husseini mayor of Jerusalem, told Winston Churchill the Jews have been amongst the most active advocates of destruction in many lands, it is well known that the disintegration of Russia was wholly or in great part brought about by the Jews, and a large proportion of the defeat of Germany and Austria must also be put at their door. Matthias Kunzel has suggested that the decisive transfer of Jewish conspiracy theory took place between 1937 and 1945 under the impact of Nazi propaganda targeted at the Arab world. According to Kunzel, 
the Nazi Arabic radio service had a staff of 80 and broadcast every day in Arabic, stressing the similarities between Islam and Nazism and supported by the activities of the Mufti of Jerusalem, Haj Amin al-Husseini, who broadcast pro-Nazi propaganda from Berlin. The Nazi regime also provided funding to the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood, which began calling for boycotts of Jewish businesses in 1936. Bernard Lewis also describes Nazi influence in the Arab world, including its impact on Michel Aflac, the principal founder of Ba'athist thought, which later dominated Syria and Iraq. After the promulgation of the Nuremberg Laws, Hitler received telegrams of congratulation from all over the Arab and Muslim world, especially from Morocco and Palestine, where the Nazi propaganda had been most active. Before long political parties of the Nazi and fascist type began to appear complete with paramilitary youth organizations, colored shirts, strict discipline and more or less charismatic leaders. George Grun attributes the increased animosity towards Jews in the Arab world to the breakdown of the Ottoman Empire in traditional Islamic society, domination by Western colonial powers under which Jews gained a disproportionately large role in the commercial, professional, and administrative life off region, the rise of Arab nationalism whose proponents sought the wealth and positions of local Jews through government channels, resentment over Jewish nationalism and the Zionist movement, and the readiness of unpopular regimes to scapegoat local Jews for political purposes. After the 1948 Arab-Israeli War, the Palestinian exodus, the creation of the State of Israel, and the independence of Arab countries from European control, conditions for Jews in the Arab world deteriorated. Over the next few decades, almost all would flee the Arab world some willingly, and some under threat see Jewish exodus from Arab and Muslim countries. In 1945 there were between 758,000 and 866,000 Jews, see table below, living in communities throughout the Arab world. Today, there are fewer than 8,000. In some Arab states, such as Libya, which was once around 3% Jewish, the Jewish community no longer exists, in other Arab countries, only a few hundred Jews remain. Harvard University professor Ruth Arvisa claims that anti-Semitism, Zionism has been the cornerstone of pan-Arab politics since the Second World War and that it is the strongest actual and potential source of unity in the Arab world. This is because Jews and Israel function as substitutes for Western values that challenge the hegemony of religious and political power in the Middle East. Anti-Semitism is also malleable enough that it can unite right-wing and left-wing groups within the Arab world. Robert Bernstein founder of Human Rights Watch, says that anti-Semitism is deeply ingrained and institutionalized in Arab nations in modern times. In the year 2003, Israeli Arab Riyad Salah, the leader of the northern branch of the Islamic movement in Israel published the following poem in the Islamic movement's periodical. You Jews are criminal bombers of mosques, comma, br slaughterers of pregnant women and babies. Br robbers and germs in all times, comma, br the creator sentenced you to be loser monkeys, comma, br victory belongs to Muslims from the Nile to the Euphrates. During a speech in 2007, Salah accused Jews of using children's blood to bake bread. We have never allowed ourselves to knead the dough for the bread that breaks the fast in the holy month of Ramadan with children's blood, he said. Whoever wants a more thorough explanation. Let him ask what used to happen to some children in Europe, whose blood was mixed in with the dough of the Jewish holy bread. Kamal Khatib, deputy leader of the northern branch of the Islamic movement, referred in one of his speeches to the Jews as fleas. Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood leader Mohammad Madiakaf has denounced what he called the myth of the Holocaust in defending Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's denial of it. The Egyptian government run newspaper, Al Akbar. On April 29, 2002, published an editorial denying the Holocaust as a fraud. The next paragraph decries the failure of the Holocaust to eliminate all of the Jews with regard to the fraud of the Holocaust. Many French studies have proven that this is no more than a fabrication, a lie, and a fraud. That is, it is a scenario the plot of which was carefully tailored, using several faked photos completely unconnected to the truth. Yes, it is a film, no more and no less. Hitler himself whom they accuse of Nazism, is in my eyes no more than a modest pupil in the world of murder and bloodshed. He is completely innocent of the charge of frying them in the hell of his false holocaust. The entire matter, as many French and British scientists and researchers have proven, is nothing more than a huge Israeli plot aimed at extorting the German government in particular and the European countries in general. But I, personally and in light of this imaginary tale, complain to Hitler, even saying to him from the bottom of my heart, 
if only you had done it, brother, if only it had really happened, so that the world could sigh in relief, without their evil and sin. In an article in October 2000 columnist Adel Hamid alleged in the state-owned Egyptian newspaper Al-Akram that Jews made matzah from the blood of non-Jewish children. Mohamed Salmawi, editor of Al-Akram Ebdo, defended the use of old European myths like the blood libel in his newspapers. In August 2010, Saudi columnist Iman al quaithley sharply criticized the phenomenon of sympathy for Adolf Hitler and for Nazism in the Arab world, specifically citing the words of Hussam Fauzi Jabbar, an Islamic cleric who justified Hitler's actions against the Jews in an Egyptian talk show one month earlier. In an October 2012 sermon broadcast on Egyptian Channel 1, which was attended by Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi, Fatah Abd al-Nabi Mansour, the head of religious endowment of the Maitru governorate, prayed, as translated by memory. Jordan does not allow entry to Jews with visible signs of Judaism or even with personal religious items in their possession. The Jordanian ambassador to Israel replied to a complaint by a religious Jew denied entry that security concerns required that travelers entering the Hashemite kingdom not do so with prayer shawls, tullet, and phylacteries, tefillin. Jordanian authorities state that the policy is in order to ensure the Jewish tourists' safety. In July 2009, six Breslov Hasidim were deported after attempting entry into Jordan in order to visit the tomb of Aaron, Sheikh Harun on Mount Hor, near Petra, because of an alert from the Ministry of Tourism. The group had taken a ferry from Sinai, Egypt because they understood that Jordanian authorities were making it hard for visible Jews to enter from Israel. The Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs is aware of the issue. Hostility toward Jews is common in Saudi Arabian media, religious sermons, school curriculum, and official government policy. Indoctrination against Jews is a part of school curriculum in Saudi Arabia. Children are advised not to befriend Jews, are given false information about them such as the claim that Jews worship the devil, and are encouraged to engage in jihad against Jews. Conspiracy theories about Jews are widely disseminated in Saudi Arabian state-controlled media. According to the U.S. State Department, religious freedom does not exist in Saudi Arabia, and therefore, Jews may not freely practice their religion. On March 2, 1974, the bodies of four Syrian Jewish women were discovered by border police in a cave in the Zabdani Mountains northwest of Damascus. Farah Zibak 24, her sisters Lulu Zibak 23, Mazel Zibak 22, and their cousin Eva Saad 18, had contracted with a band of smugglers to flee Syria to Lebanon and eventually to Israel. The girls' bodies were found raped, murdered and mutilated. The police also found the remains of two Jewish boys, Nadan Shaya 18 and Qasim Abadi 20, victims of an earlier massacre. Syrian authorities deposited the bodies of all six in sacks before the homes of their parents in the Jewish ghetto in Damascus. In 1984 Syrian Defense Minister Mustafa Atlas published a book called The Matzah of Zion, which claimed that Jews had killed Christian children in Damascus to make matzahs, see Damascus Affair. His book inspired the Egyptian TV series Horseman Without a Horse, see below, and a spin-off, The Diaspora, which led to Hezbollah's Almanar being banned in Europe for broadcasting it. Former Ku Klux Klan leader David Duke visited Syria in November 2005 and made a speech that was broadcast live on Syrian television. For a personal account of the discrimination and physical attacks experienced by Jews in Tunisia see the Jewish Arab anti-colonialist writer Albert Memmes' account at each crisis. With every incident of the slightest importance, the mob would go wild, setting fire to Jewish shops. This even happened during the Yom Kippur War. Tunisia's president, Habib Bourguiba, has in all probability never been hostile to the Jews, but there was always that notorious delay, which meant that the police arrived on the scene only after the shops had been pillaged and burned. Is it any wonder that the exodus to France and Israel continued and even increased? On November 30, 2012, Prominent Tunisian Imam Sheikh Ahmad al suhaili of Rindes, told his followers during a live broadcast on Hannibal TV that God wants to destroy this, Tunisian, sprinkling of Jews and is sterilizing the wombs of Jewish women. This was the fourth time incitement against Jews has been reported in the public sphere since the overthrow of Tunisian President Zine el Abidine Ben Ali in 2011, thus prompting Jewish community leaders to demand security protection from the Tunisian government. Al Suhaili subsequently posted a video on the internet in which he claimed that his statements had been misinterpreted. The history of the Jews in Tunisia goes back to Roman times. Before 1948, 
The Jewish population of Tunisia reached a peak of 110,000. Today it has a Jewish community of less than 2,000 people. The Hamas, an offshoot of the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood, has a foundational statement of principles, or covenant that claims that the French Revolution, the Russian Revolution, colonialism and both world wars were created by the Zionists. It also claims the Freemasons and Rotary Clubs are Zionist fronts and refers to the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. Claims that Jews and Freemasons were behind the French Revolution originated in Germany in the mid-19th century. In a 2011 article published by the Gatestone Institute, Jordanian-Palestinian writer and the Secretary-General of the Jordanian Opposition Coalition Mudar Zarn wrote that the Palestinians have been used as fuel for the new form of anti-Semitism. This has hurt the Palestinians and exposed them to unprecedented and purposely media-ignored abuse by Arab governments, including some of those who claim love for the Palestinians, yet in fact only bear hatred to Jews. This has resulted in Palestinian cries for justice, equality, freedom and even basic human rights being ignored while the world getting consumed with delegitimizing Israel from either ignorance or malice. Mahmoud Abbas, leader of the PLO, published a PhD thesis at Moscow University in 1982, called The Secret Connection Between the Nazis and the Leaders of the Zionist Movement. His doctoral thesis later became a book, which, following his appointment as Palestinian Prime Minister in 2003, was heavily criticized as an example of Holocaust denial. In his book, Abbas wrote, It seems that the interest of the Zionist movement, however, is to inflate this figure, of Holocaust deaths, so that their gains will be greater. This led them to emphasize this figure. 6 million, in order to gain the solidarity of international public opinion with Zionism. Many scholars have debated the figure of 6 million and reached stunning conclusions, fixing the number of Jewish victims at only a few hundred thousand. Hezbollah Zalmanar TV channel has often been accused of airing anti Semitic broadcasts, blaming the Jews for a Zionist conspiracy against the Arab world, and often airing excerpts from the Protocols of the Elders of Zion which the Encyclopedia Britannica describes as a fraudulent document that served as a pretext and rationale for anti-Semitism in the early 20th century. Almanar recently aired a drama series, called The Diaspora, which is based on historical anti-Semitic allegations. BBC reporters who watched the series said that, correspondents who have viewed the diaspora note that it quotes extensively from the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, a notorious 19th-century publication used by the Nazis among others to fuel race hatred. In another incident, an Almanar commentator recently referred to Zionist attempts to transmit AIDS to Arab countries. Almanar officials deny broadcasting anti-Semitic incitement and state that their position is anti-Israeli, not anti-Semitic. However, Hezbollah has directed strong rhetoric both against Israel and Jews, and it has cooperated in publishing and distributing outright anti-Semitic literature. The government of Lebanon has not criticized continued broadcast of anti-Semitic material on television. Due to protests by the CRIF umbrella group of French Jews regarding allegations of anti-Semitic content, French Prime Minister Jean-Pierre Raffarin called for a ban on Almanar broadcasting in France on December 2, 2004 just two weeks after Almanar was authorized to continue broadcasting in Europe by France's media watchdog agency. On December 13, 2004, France's highest administrative court banned Hezbollah's Almanar TV station on the grounds that it consistently incites racial hatred and anti-Semitism. The 1940s and the establishment of Israel saw rapid emigration of Jews out of Yemen. In the wake of anti-Jewish riots and massacres. By the late 1990s, only several hundred remained mainly in a northwestern mountainous region named Sada and town of Raida. Houthi members put up notes on the Jew stores, accusing them of corrupting Muslim morals. Eventually, the Houthi leaders sent threatening messages to the Jewish community, We warn you to leave the area immediately. We give you a period of 10 days, or you will regret it. Many Arab newspapers, such as Al Hayat Al Jadida, the Palestinian Authority's official newspaper, often write that the Jews control all the world's governments and that the Jews plan genocide on all the Arabs in the West Bank. Others write less sensational stories, and state that Jews have too much of an influence in the United States government. Often the leaders of other nations are said to be controlled by Jews. Articles in many official Arab government newspapers claim that the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, reflects facts, and thus points to an international Jewish conspiracy to take over the world. In 2001-2002, 
Arab Radio and Television produced a 30-part television miniseries entitled Horseman Without a Horse, starring prominent Egyptian actor Mohamed Sobi, which contains dramatizations of the protocols of the elders of Zion. The United States and Israel criticized Egypt for airing the program, which includes racist falsehoods that have a history of being used as a pretext for persecuting Jews. In 2008 a Pew Research Center survey found that negative views concerning Jews were most common in the three predominantly Arab nations polled, with 97% of Lebanese having unfavorable opinion of Jews, 95% in Egypt and 96% in Jordan. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.